All right, guys, welcome back to another uh, Three Comic Money. Um, almost called it the wrong show. Uh, Three Comic <laughs> Money, guys. Uh, w- this time it's sort of cool. We a few weeks back we talked to Koi uh, Fom, and he he was talking. And he mentioned we brought up one of his uh, comics they did was an anthology album for a band called Jack the Radio. Well, the cool thing was George Ho- is it Hag or Hog? Uh, Hodge, like Mars. Mars. Hodge, oh, okay. Hodge. I'm, I was going to butcher. I'm glad I'm butchering at the beginning of the show instead of the end. Um, You're not the first. Yeah. So George Hodge, the uh, lead singer for the band, he reached out and said, hey, thanks for promoting us a little bit. And so I said, well, hey, you want to be on the show? You like comic books? Let's talk comics. And he's going to be on the show with us. He's going to play the game. He's going to share some of the books that he likes. Um, so it's going to be sort of cool. But uh, once again, this is comicbookinvest.com. And this is Three Comic Money. Um, and just enjoy the show with us so all right you want the you want the cards up yeah let's look at that yeah, let's, let's see all right I'll put, there there's the deck so george it's your choice one two or three so i watched a couple episodes i was trying to figure out if there was like a secret trick to this but i couldn't figure it out so i'm gonna go with three okay yeah the secret <laughs> trick is i asked my wife tell me a number one, two, or three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mike what you got i want the middle card tonight so i'll take one Okay, let's see here. Wish I could get sound effects to play when I do this, but I'm glad there. <laughs> oh, nice. Ooh, yeah. oh, so Mars Chris covers there. Chris. That's a, one of my favorites. That was a goal of trying to get that freaking Amazing Spider-Man 315. That was hard. For some reason, that was hard. It's a great McFarlane cover. But. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Yeah. It's weird how some of those books that you don't think are going to be tough end up being tough. It's like the ones yeah. that aren't technically keys and you're like why can't i find this it's like that stupid x-men adventures whatever the heck that was season two number seven it's like a 10 cent book it took me like it became famous in town because i everyone knew i was looking for it. i have the cover art for it it took me forever to you drove the price I couldn't, I couldn't find well, it. we would couldn't like find literally it. there'd be like 10 of us in a room going through like a dollar sale and we'd go hey mike x-men adventures anyone have one and we go which book is it again and like you have the entire room shouting out which ones they had until all of a sudden he found it and now no one cares but it got to the point where it got to the point where i would have paid anything for the damn comic it's literally like 50 cent comic i would have paid like 50 bucks for it at that point i was so pissed yeah well i mean that's what 315 it was like the one mcfarlane book i mean i had 300 i have 316 but that or no sorry 30 is it 305 or 315 it's 305 um whatever that's asm is 306 Three or six, ah, but uh, couldn't find it anywhere. I eventually paid like fifteen or twenty for a five dollar book just because I, I bought it at a con because like it's finally here. I finally have it in my hand, and I'm yeah. so I kicked myself because then <laughs> after that I see it everywhere for three or four dollars. I'm like, really? I mean, because I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a snob. I don't care about grade for a lot of the books. It's just completing it for me, uh, especially my Amazing Spider Man run. But so we're doing homage covers. Uh, George, why'd you sort of go with that as your topic? Why we brought that on? Well, I mean, originally I was thinking like psychedelic or cosmic covers can kind of tie in with the album and stuff, but you guys did a pretty awesome psychedelic one already. So uh, there were some cool homage covers that I had handy and I was like, I want to see what else. And you guys kind of mentioned it with Koi and there's so many covers that I don't know are homage covers. Yeah. So I'm hoping I I learned something tonight. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, we've learned, I don't know, every once in a while on CBSI, uh, uh, Ben C puts out this little homage cover little thing it's like a two cover oh, wow. swap and he pulls them from freaking 1940s and then it's a night w- with a cover swipe for the 1960s you're like i did i thought the 19 the 2010 was a swipe no it, it swapped the detective <laughs> comics is one that was like what wait detective comics one is a swipe of action comics 12 and you're just like how does what? he just <laughs> the knowledge he has in the golden age and silver and knowledge just like whoa that's but amazing it's insane yeah. yeah, so I, some of for my first cover, I'm actually going for an homage to a one of my favorite music. Since you're a music guy, I figured I'd go for a awesome. music one. Uh, America number seven. <laughs> you recognize yeah. the cover that this is a homage to <laughs> Bruce. Yeah, it's a classic. It's one of my favorite. I'm a I like Bruce. Uh, he's a fun thing. And then just Miss uh, America, America Chavez has just become very popular. And yeah. hit, and this is one that I could foresee, just because of the the image, um, becoming yeah. popular when she, whenever she hits the MCU, uh, it could definitely become a popular book. But that entire I run has some one. great covers in it. But I mean, if you Damn like it. Bruce, you immediately recognize it. I bought it when it came out. I bought, I think I have three <laughs> copies of this cover just because it's such a great iconic cover. 
uh, Mike Peter's Peter, reading so, my mind. He's going. Peter's reading my mind. He's going. That's a butt cover Morello doesn't have. Now he's yeah. got to go get it. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm just going to pull it out. Yeah. If, if you don't Damn know, it. Mike's our resident butt guy. So nice. <laughs> hey, I'm Cosmo Kramer, the Yes uh, Man. You yeah, can't so. shoot me for that. I mean, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, at least you weren't a resident. Right. Was it green underpants and uh, whatever? Uh, yeah. No, it was gr- a green swimsuits and tentacles or something like. Uh, for our yeah, underwater, no, no we had like six of those. That like every episode, the guy chose yeah. the same cover. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, right. no, yeah. Inter- interesting is a way to put it. Yes. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <the same. laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm a simple guy. Just, 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 just butts for me. It's like, nothing crazy. <laughs> All right, Mike. What you got? All right, so I I, uh, I I always struggle with the word homage when I think when I think uh, comics homaging other comics, I always think swipes, right? So um, so I went in a slightly different direction with a couple of my picks tonight, and I went with homage movie poster stuff, and I went with one of my favorites, uh, the pulp the pulp fiction, yeah, the pulp fiction uh, poster homage, yeah, uh, and uh, and I just. Uh, you know, I thought I had heard at some point that there was a price variant of this. The, am I, the new am stand I is a dollar fifty. Oh, okay. No, this is. A, I'm sorry. This is a direct. I thought at first it was too because barcode, but no. Um, I just I love the cover. I think it's great. Uh, I think it really does a good a good job homaging the original poster. Um, it's just it's just fun. It pops. I love the yellow because I think the poster is orange, if I'm not mistaken, um, yeah. or like a burnt like a burnt red or rust or something like that. So I actually like the yellow. It looks really nice, but it's just one of my favorites, and I always try to upgrade it. I would really love a nine eight of that eventually. But. That's awesome. Do you know who who originally did that? Not uh, sorry, who did the art? Uh, that's a good question. I yeah, did know for a really long time. The beauty, the beauty of uh, my comic shop. We can quickly look it up. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will look it up while you're uh, while you're showing your pick. I'll look I was it just up. curious. Yeah, that's awesome. I should know that. That's something I should have up. It'll be in the article when you read the article. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> yes. So make sure you head to comicbookinvest.com and read the article. <laughs> Don't set them them up. You guys are not. <laughs> oh, look at the graphic. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say anything? Yeah, that's that's the graphic. <laughs> I love it. It's, per- it's perfect. All right. So I'll show my first pick. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we talked about Koi. Awesome guy. I've been a fan of his art for years. We got to work together on the, the Jack the Radio Creatures Anthology comic. So I had to to, to start with some Koi fam art. Oh, uh, yes. Good one. Here we go. Ooh. Not good at this. His Wolverine variant. I don't know. Uh, when did he do that? Uh, this was the Jason Aaron run. Okay. Uh, I think Garney did all the interior. So I got... Garney signature and Jason Aaron signature. Okay, awesome. So that that would be right before Death of Wolverine, then the Jason Aaron run. Yeah, I think there yeah, might be something in between. I can't remember. Mm. That's pretty. I didn't realize he did that cover. Like when we were doing all the trying to pull up, it's it's so hard to figure out all the artists like what their covers are. Like you go to you go to websites, you go to Instagram, you're like okay, where's they don't have a database of just. Yeah, uh, especially when you start talking store exclusives and things I, like what you have there. I, I saw it, but I couldn't find one easily to yeah. try to get it before uh, we had them on. Nice. But that one did catch my eye. I was like, ooh, I know everybody gets tired of the Spider Man one homages, but yeah. if they're done well, I still like them. Well, and I pulled that out and I kept yeah. finding more homages to that cover. I'm like, okay, there's more than I thought. <laughs> well, isn't it uh, <laughs> McFarland homaged himself in Spawn? Oh, yeah. Was it Spawn 8? Yeah. Like, is that the. Yep. And then he did it again in Spider Man 13. Like he did, he just switched costumes. <laughs> <Speaking Yeah. up. laughs> uh, I almost pulled that one too. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, get the Spider Man 13 if you want. I got it here. Nice. George, how long have you interacted with Koi? Like, man, I think I bought a commission from him maybe in 2010. So you've been and doing that might have been around when that came out. Maybe that was a little later, but uh, yeah, it was pretty early in his career. I think he was still working a day job and doing comics part time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I started collecting original art in like 2009, uh, which was a great time. I mean, not as good as the 80s, but was a great time to start collecting because artists were throwing things on personal websites, eBay, 
um, and some stuff at conventions. So could get stuff still relatively cheap. I mean, cheap, relatively cheap. Uh, Compared to now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it's gone crazy now, which is good and bad. Yeah, it's good for the artist. It's bad for a collector who wants to find something at an affordable yeah. price. Well, and it's good, too, if you're trying to sell something to buy something else. Yeah. You might be able to sell it from, I don't know. That's true. Very cool. All right, Peter, what you got? Oh, that's right. I'm up now. All right. <laughs> hey, you remember to make yourself big. <laughs> I did. I remember. That sounded awkward. <laughs> now, I'm going to I'm gonna pivot my order here and follow up. George pick with my Wolverine book. Yeah. This one for the second. I went with this uh Wolverine 55, the uh oh, oh man. Uh oh. Spence Stories 22. Yes. 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 Yeah, so I went with this yes. one. It's an awesome oh, choice. Oh fantastic yeah, yeah, choice. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the heading. I totally forgot about that cover. Greg Land, like me too. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I pulled this out oh, oh, as soon as I heard what the topic was gonna be. It was like first. First two books was this was one and the other one was my other. <laughs> you just made Ben very proud that you 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 pulled a go a, an homage to a golden age cover that is like you guys you covered that one in vintage didn't you the original yeah, a times, actually. Yep. So, but yeah, no, that golden yeah, age back in the beginning. I'm learning every time I, I hop on there with the uh, you know Ben C and John Z. They're uh, educating me. Yes. <laughs> Chris, Chris and I started on that show. We, we very quickly got classed out of it. So <laughs> I just get and so we can't hit yeah, the slide for it. So it's like okay, yeah. Uh, so well, I'm actually going to pull up one of our uh, other guests, one of our original, our first guests that we had on, Mike Mayhew. And I oh, showed yeah. this book, but I didn't use it, so I can use it now. And this uh, is just such a great, oh, yeah. great cover. Oh, I wanted yeah. a reason to use it. I missed it for vampires. Because uh, I just was too lazy to pull it out of the box that it was in, um, but Man, it's such a great vampire picks. Hmm? You missed all your vampire picks. You, you missed your Tomb of Dracula. Morello oh, yeah. took that one from you now too. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love that cover. It's just, I mean, that's another when you talk about. I mean, Spider Man covers have been homaged so many times, and that's another one that's ridiculous, especially now store. It wears you out. Store exclusives, like the number of times, like every character is homaged doing that, which. If I if I recall correctly, the Amazing Fifteen and this one almost could be considered the is Detective uh, Twenty Seven. Is that is this an homage to Detective Twenty Seven when you think about it? Like Fifteen, it's going a different angle, but it's the same guy. He's carrying a person swinging across this building. I mean, I, and Ben will definitely correct me in the uh, in the honorable mention there. He'll come in. No, you're you're completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, wrong. Is, but. Uh, I don't know. I like. I, I love the cover. Um, it's Mayhew's just fabulous on some of his style. I mean, I, that's what I've loved about all the, all our different interviews. Like, you just dig deep, and you're like, oh goodness! Like, we're learning stuff, just like we're learning stuff about your band and different things, and and like we'll figure out like, whoa, okay, how big the comic book world is, and how creators and how everyone's connected and everything. Uh, I'm sure. I, how awesome would it be if you ever get to uh, the opportunity, George, to have your one of your covers homage for like a hip hop variant or like you had like those, those, I don't know if you saw how those blew up and then oh, there's man. like the rock so, albums that we're waiting on that do that. There's a, there's a local hip hop artist from North Carolina, King Mez that mm. actually had one of his, I think it was a black Panther cover. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, real, real clean, basic design. Um, I can't remember the issue, but we did I'll have somebody locally, which was pretty cool. I'll yeah. find it and I'll drop it in right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that should be a number one. I think all of those hip hop variants were number ones of some oh, sort. Oh, awesome. awesome! Well, no, so eventually because they did them, um, uh, there were a few like I think number seven for Deadpool. There was the license to ill or something, but like, yeah, no, it is. Thing. Yeah, Mike, you have the stash of them, but it's amazing. We have a guy on our site that slowly, like, he released an article a long time ago, and now all of a sudden he's revamping and bringing up more because people are calling him out. Like, you left this one off. You left that one off. And you're like, a dude, lot. we didn't realize there was like. 15 60 of these i thought there was like 15 i think there's like 100 i think there's like 150 of them there's a lot insane. it's insane yeah the, the real deadpool one is that one in 100 i think it's like the vanilla ice one. Oh yeah, which yeah. Is <laughs> ridiculous it's yeah, ridiculous I I love love levels, right? yeah like, that's the perfect fit. yeah like, like, perfect like i couldn't have couldn't have chosen it better <laughs> well yeah that's like when we talked to sanford last last time he was like the the nas and we talked about the miles one it's it was the perfect cover the perfect 
illustration. Like it was just beautiful the way it was done. Um, but yeah, some of them haven't made sense to me. Like I think it was the the NWA A Force one. I'm like, uh, okay, I don't see that. Uh, it's Hughes though. It, it is Hughes. I know, that's why I had to pick on it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I just ordered one because it's Hughes. Yeah, <laughs> see, I'm not. A, I'm a Hughes. I like Hughes, but I'm not a diehard like uh, Mike is. Uh, yeah, well, a lot of he's butts. very talented. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is. So, is this a butt cover that we get coming next, Mike? <laughs> no, no, it's no, it's not. You want to change it? We have time. Uh, you know what? Sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch my order. I'm gonna switch my order, and I'm gonna go with actually. This is one of my favorite homage covers. Homage to Underworld. It is one of my favorite characters as well. Uh, it is a butt cover. Uh, the X23. Uh, the X23. Clayton Crane. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, Angel Medina did the pencils on the uh, on the Incredible Hulk 441, uh, the uh, the Pulp Fiction one. Um, oh, awesome. Really great guy, really great guy. I got to meet him a couple years ago. Really cool. But this this is one of my uh, this is one of my favorite covers of all time. I had real trouble hunting this one down. It took me forever to finally get myself a copy. Um, I was trying to get all the X23 variant covers, which is a challenge in and of itself. But I think this one might be my overall favorite, just from just from the choices. It's the perfect the character. Gerardo? Uh, I like the Delato, but I, but I got to say, maybe it's that I, I've just I've lost my steam on Delato in general over mm -hmm. the last few years. Um, this this cover just stands out to me a, a little bit more, and I have I sort of have the Delato on that X Men Red number one. So, <laughs> and I know it's not the same thing. I know, I know, I know. It's sort of like a like a bootleg, but but still um, like a Lamole edition. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It does have that feel to it, but but still, at least I have the damn art somewhere on a, on a comic <laughs> book on a comic book that was published in the United States. So, uh, but yeah, but this one, this is one of my favorites. It's kind of a pricey one, but um, but I'm 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 really happy to own this one. It's a favorite, and it's a butt cover. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, that's why you like Hughes. All right. <laughs> Not going to lie. All right, George, what you have here? All right. So this partially inspired by uh, your last session, but... Um, oh, that really, one. You, this you is just... uh, Chris Bruder and Rico right. Renzi variant cover. Uh, again, two guys that was lucky enough to have work on the book. Uh, Rico, killer colorist, actually lives locally in North Carolina as well. Also, they did. They were in. They did your uh, creatures as well. Yeah. So they did a one one pager. I was only able to get them. I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak that in real oh, quick. Oh, definitely. Oh yeah, no. Please, Go please. Uh, yeah. And it's one pager, but one of the coolest. Oh, oh yeah. nice. They're grew like psychedelic looking. That's really cool. So it's the song is about walking around New York City, and Chris came up with this brilliant idea to basically break the panels with actual subway lines yeah, uh, okay. with, with the actual stops. So, you know, really creates this great movement and kind of travel around the city. He also snuck in and I didn't pick up on this originally, but uh, the little kid here in the corner mm -hmm. is a homage to uh, Nas cover Elmatic. Oh, Ooh, which is a great album. Oh. Yeah. Which is, uh, a, once he, once he, I, cause I asked him about it and I was like, Oh, how did I not see it? Once I knew, but if you don't know, it's kind of hard to notice. Yeah. And I, I don't know if he's said it yet, but I think this uh, woman here is kind of homage to a PJ Harvey cover. Um, oh, and wow, like her. a fire? Is oh, that her lick my legs and I'm on? <laughs> is that Craze Papaya? Oh, my God. The best hot dog ever. <laughs> uh, dude. Yeah. Oh, dude. I didn't even pick up on that either. Oh, God. Craze Papaya is incredible, man. Anybody who yeah. goes to New York. Papaya dog or Grace Papaya? Every time I look at this page, I see something new. So it, they put so much into it. Yeah, so, awesome. you know, and this this cover, I mean, the do the right thing. I know it's it's not a comic homage, but I figured it would count. It yeah. still counts. Well, that's what that counts yeah. absolutely. I just absolutely. did a, a movie one, so, so it doesn't count. We're both that's true. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so George, the, is the comic album? Is it or your your comic for your album? Is it? Each pay each artist did one song, or yeah. So we did. Um, there's 14 tracks on the record, but the first track is just an instrumental intro. So that's kind of my uh, intro introduction in the comic. It's a prose introduction, and then there's 13 uh, short comics. Each one is a song from the record, and they're one to four page stories. Um, and then there's kind of an intro page with a pinup, a little bit about the song, a little bit about who's 
uh, involved in each story. Um, so it's something I have never put together an anthology. So it was kind of figuring out uh, how to lay it out, how to get everybody in, because yeah. I didn't have a, a clear, crystal clear plan at the beginning of mm -hmm. who was going to be working on the book. I didn't know that I was going to be able to get artists or a group of artists for each story. Uh, I, I'm impressed with some of the artists you had on that, like getting McCoy, but getting Tommy <laughs> Lee. Like I'm sitting going, whoa, wait, I, I recognize over half the names. That's awesome. Going through it, and I was like, whoa, Aaron Conley, I recognize that name. Uh, I mean, so like the guys you just mentioned, like I recognized, but I don't like they weren't as prevalent on my mind. I was like, okay, to reach out and get ten artists, or even get two artists that are like semi well known that have done art in Marvel and DC books is impressive. Yeah. Like usually you assume I'm you're gonna pull these guys that are Kickstarter guys that really just need a need a handout wherever they can get it. So I'm impressed when yeah. I see your little list of people I'm like, dude, or that got colored for that book. I did read that book. And dude, I mean and with Koi with with Maury Hollowell, I'm like that guy colored one of my favorite stories of all time, Old Man Logan. Mm. Oh, so uh, you know, to be able, when Coy mentioned him, I was like, yes, like, <laughs> do it. like <laughs> one of the few modern classic story arcs. Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, which one was it? The, uh, secret wars one or the, when the new arc started with Jeff Lemire no, and no, the, Sorrentino. The original school. Oh, I was oh nice. Okay. Oh, though you mean the, back in the, 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 the Wolverine 66, 66 through whatever it is. I think. Yeah. yeah. And then a giant size. Yeah. Yeah. And the giant, yeah. Giant size. I just like the fact you just mentioned the giant size. Most people forget I know. the story. I'm like, you're a true comic book fan, knowing that. Well, I mean, it was weird because I remember waiting on that giant size to come out. Uh, and I think originally it was supposed to be another issue or two. And then they're like, well, we got too many pages. So we're going to delay it. And then it's going to be a giant size, which was pretty cool. I, I don't know many books doing that in the past yeah. 10, 20 years. Yeah. No, because they'd want to get they'd want to get your money twice, right? So exactly. in general, so here you're. But totally, I mean, all jokes aside, they would they would want two issues. They'd want to yeah. milk it as long as they could. In this case, they just said, they go, "No." Can you just do a bigger story. splash page of him walking? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of walking in that one. Yeah, <laughs> and I think it's there was great. like a, a darkness page, like all black spread in there. Mm. It just said schnicked, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> Probably more than one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's pacing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Dramatic yeah. pause. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Peter, what you have here? Oh, that's right. I'm up next. Let me get my cursor over. All right. So this was going to be my first one because I wanted to follow up my uh, a pick I think I made last week with uh, uh, with Sanford. I, I think that was my uh, dirty pair. Yeah. So. I also got a butt cover and went with Hughes. And went oh, with I'm Hughes. so and jealous! The Dirty Pair, which is oh, that's right. It was Planet Comics that I had mm -hmm. before, but yeah, this is the homage there for uh, for that. So I had to go with the Hughes because I like Hughes. <laughs> Very talented. I always love it. I can take shots at the guys that you guys love. <laughs> I was five minutes from pulling the trigger on that book, and Peter messages me and goes, "Dude, I don't know if I should have done this, but I just pulled the pulled the trigger on a big boy book." Because I had, we had both just gotten an offer sent to us by the eBay seller, and it was a really, really good offer. And I'm like, man, should I do it? Should I do it? Oh man, it's a modern. Oh, I can't spend that much on a modern. And while I'm doing that, Peter's like, I just got a copy of Dirty Pair. I'm like, you son of a. I know what copy that is. So pissed. Uh, I'm happy for you though. It's such a great book, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I also kind of doubled down on the Hughes because I actually just uh, came to an agreement with John Z on his Teen Titan 75 that he. Oh, nice. That's I'm an amazing book. book my pile as well <laughs> good for you man um that's a book i'll probably never own timing worked out yeah. good for you i'm too focused on peanuts me and charlie brown are like this these <laughs> so. i like the, the the breadth there from adam hughes to peanuts yeah. oh yeah, yeah we'll get out a little of everything yeah. I try to live like a kid as much as I can. And I like I need, it. I, like I need it. peanuts in my life. It's fun. It's <laughs> it's innocent. It's just great stuff. Yeah, it, it counterbalances all the red Sony and butt covers. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, metal bikinis and and nude butts. I need some. I need some. I need some Snoopy and Woodstock in there somewhere. So that's why he has a sweet spot for Lucy Lawless, just because she's a peanuts character too. <laughs> <laughs> so now I can't unsee that. <laughs> Just seeing uh, the just, things, and I'm just like, just, oh. just picture her holding a football and having Hercules try to come and kick it. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
all right. So switching gears with the, the homage to Lucy Lawless there, I'm gonna go into uh, one of my favorite uh, homages I have there. Ooh. It's uh, Spidey Super Stories from a really terrible uh, '70s comic, oh, but I love this cover. I picked it up pretty much, I think, two or three yes. different times. It's a great st Star Wars homage, Star Jaws. Um, <laughs> I love the fact it's uh, that's Moon Dragon and Doctor Doom and Spider Man. Like, what type wow. of combination that's is going on? Uh, with that that story, those Spidey stories are—I mean, they're just ridiculous. I mean, it was written; it was a kids' show in the seventies. Uh, the cool thing is, I don't know if you've ever pulled up the uh, the uh, YouTube videos. You can pull up the old episodes and just how bad they are. And then one of the one I, that I pulled up, I pulled up to watch just because it's a little weird and like, okay, today this would be considered wrong. Like the it has Morgan Freeman in it, which is great. He's a cop, and then he, there's a Yeti. Uh, I think it's uh, the 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 bad guy Yeti, and the Yeti runs around, and his entire premise is as, as a bad guy is sitting on people's ice cream cones. And <laughs> that is awful, man. That's awful. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> so I mean, like he's sitting there, Morgan Freeman's eating his ice cream cone, and he he puts it down, and the Yeti comes in and sits on it, and then oh. he starts yelling for someone to come help, police, police, and then Spider Man <laughs> swings in, and he's like, "Oh wait, I'm I'm the police officer." And it's so How dumb. Why are the writers? Oh, yeah, <laughs> the same writers that wrote Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Can you imagine sitting down? Can you imagine being at that table the first day and going, "How how how much how much have you drank, you guys? Because yeah. when did you smoke? Because man, where did you come up with that? We're losing them. Tell them they like pizza. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but where do you connect the Yeti sitting on ice cream cones to also being a you know? We need to involve police action that somebody sat on my ice cream cone. <laughs> Not like, I'm going to tell your mom because you knocked my ice cream cone over. No, it should be a felony, Peter. That should be a felony. It's not okay. It's it was not a different I mean, it's, it, I mean, like I, Mike and I, we both have kids just now. Peter had has a little one a little bit older, but like watching the kids' shows now, you're like, ah, man, the electric company, that was like considered like great TV back when it was yeah. on. And just like how bad that is. Like I'm watching Sesame Street now and I'm like, Whew, when you pull up the old episodes of Sesame Street, you're like, man, it, it's uh, yes, I'm on a comic book show right now talking about Sesame Street. <laughs> it was three, three, two, one contacts, and uh, and uh, and then all of a sudden, TV changed, and it was Hulk, Wonder Woman, yes. uh, Dukes of Hazard, and you're like, okay, this is I can I can hang with this. This is way better. <laughs> also, no, no crap on the new Electric Company that had the uh, the Hamilton guy, Lynn Lynn Manuel was on the, the oh, new really? Electric Company. I saw I him a couple of times. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so you can actually see him. Was that, that, was that the one Dr. John was on? He was Dr. Teeth. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it might be. Piano player for the electric company. It could be. <laughs> Dr. John. I, I, he, I listened to him for a minute, but he had like a couple of songs that became, was made it higher on the indie alternative stuff than his other stuff. But I haven't, mm. haven't heard anything lately by him. Well, he, he, I think he passed earlier this year. Okay. Oh, did yeah. he? I think so. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm, now I'm second guessing myself. So much has happened in the past few months. Yeah. He, he's going to watch this and be like, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> right here, man. That, that's where I, uh, Peter will put some image making fun of you if you're wrong. Just right above your head. <laughs> Or we'll just remove this completely, so it yes. won't be offered for anyone. <laughs> or, or we'll put the we'll put the rest in peace up if it's if it's. Oh, true. it was last year, June June sixth, last okay. year. Okay. So that's why. Yeah. Mm. So. Uh, so yeah. switching gears back to comics. Makes me think of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the only thing I think of with Spidey stories is that Thanos copter. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And there's actually some fun covers, but for bo the book, it's not great. It's not worth it. But yeah, but still, uh, you still like it. That's, oh, that's, yeah. a, that's still a fun pick. All right, Mike, what you got got for us? Okay, I went with the the pick I went la with last. I love because I think most people don't realize, or or, or the, I should say the the swipe or the homage has, be has become more famous than the original, and it was only five years after the original. So. Um, Crisis on Infinite Earths number seven, oh, which yeah. is a swipe slash homage from Uncanny X Men one thirty six, I think. Um, it's one more oh, Cyclops yeah. holding uh, Jean Jean Grey. Don't worry, I'll put it in. Yeah, um, and I think it's it's one of those. This this one has sort of 
overtaken the other one. I think most people yeah. think of this yeah. when this gets when other swipes happen that look like this. Everyone refers to this book. They don't refer yeah. to the X Men book. Five that years Batman ago. book. The, yeah, I guess I guess they're probably all swipes of that, right? I mean, yeah. That's probably true. Yeah, also true. I, yeah, I, what, I, I didn't even think about one thirty six. It's a classic, but yeah, you're right. The when I think of, I do think of that one, the Supergirl, a lot more than I do yeah. the one thirty six. Yeah, but I think you're right though. I think they both swipe from that Batman, which I can never remember the number. Peter will, Peter the sleuth will. <laughs> that's, and that's what it. John Z brought up for the colors. Like I never even thought about the psychedelic colors. Is I think he pulled the Batman <laughs> oh, wow. book out, and yep. it was like the bright sun pink in the background or something. Yep. Yeah, also a very cool cover. And I can never remember the number though. Ben Ben would be Ben would be punching me in the jaw right now for not remembering, <laughs> not remembering the number, but <laughs> that's awesome. All right, George, what you got? All right, my last one. Say Space Riders. Ah, Space uh, Riders. This is a Matthew Allison variant for the third print. Uh, so I had to give Matt some love. He did the cover for the Jack the Radio comic. He also did a four-page interior story. And this is one of my favorite books of the past uh, six, seven years. Can't remember when it came out exactly. But uh, Alexis Zirit does the interiors. If you want to talk about uh, psychedelic colors. Yeah, absolutely. Some of my favorite stuff. But uh, Nick Fury, Starenko, I think Nick Fury 6 mm, yeah. last year. Which, oh, yeah, when we're doing psychedelic, like Nick Fury was the standard. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. The baseline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you can't not mention Nick Fury and psychedelic. Yeah. Uh, yep. No, absolutely. Yeah. The Space Riders is a good series. My, my buddy Keith put me on that. And I was like, what? He's like, just check it out. Just the art alone is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I actually, I actually just featured one of those a couple of days ago on my other article. Um, oh, awesome. Uh, one, of the, one of the original, the Nick Fury ones, the Starenko ones. So oh, it's the one. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the one that's cheap for whatever reason. It's the one that nobody seems to put a premium on. It's the number five, which is oh, the yeah. really psychedelic colors on it. But it's for whatever reason, it's not the one everybody goes after. But that's awesome. Is what it is. <laughs> cool covers. That whole little run is amazing. Oh yeah. All right, Peter. What you have hey, here? What you I got to wrap this up now. Yeah. It right. better be amazing. Right. There's a lot of options that could have went with with this. I mean, again, we got. You have homages you have where the actual artist pays you know credit to you know after so and so like they actually credit the artist that they're following on the cover you have the hip-hop covers you have the movie poster covers i decided to go a different direction with my last pick and went with a video game cover Ooh. and went with the realm number one the castlevania, castlevania. <laughs> cover for uh this oh. experiment i think this was like a uk store that did this but I saw it. I just had to have it because I, I love the Castlevania series. That's as, awesome. as, so I made this my pick. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, I've never seen that. I mean, no, me either. That's really cool. I, and I, I love, love Castlevania. That. I love the cover. It's a again something you don't see all the time. Like I, I've seen tons of uh, you know the movie posters and whatnot, but not a lot of video game covers out there. So oh, yeah, get, so kind of I together, that one in. I'm impressed. Not one of us went for a 300 swipe. Uh, nope. I mean, I yeah. like so. Since we did homage covers, where would you guys say on what would be the most over swiped book? I mean, George, I know you pulled up Spider Man One, but is there? A, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> but that's been a, I do actually like that the second print's actually gorgeous too of that book. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I don't know how many. I feels like what. Three years ago, like every store did a store variant that was Spider Gwen doing three hundred, uh, Miss Marvel, oh, yeah. like whoever it was, like it was like and every like, Spider character, four so different versions of the same cover. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Those but, Phantom covers they did a lot. It was like still had one. They had Black Cat doing it because I have a few of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it was Phantom. I was like, I was. I know it's some store. It felt like there's always a three hundred variant that was coming out this yeah. week. I think. Was it Age of Chaos just did one? Uh, the, the random, like, Evil Ernie and Age of Chaos combined comic? or <laughs> chat. There was a Venom one that just did the 300 with the Codex or whatever. That's oh, so yeah. Cool. yeah. Recently. Yeah, I've yeah it's got to be. So. Oh. Has to be. Has to be the, mo has to be the most. Um, by the way, Batman 156. Batman 156. Okay. That's Ooh, the one. Okay. That's the one. Okay. 
Uh, I'll, I'll make sure I work that in as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so George, how long you? So the name of your band is Jack the Radio. Is there a reason yeah. behind that? Uh the the initial reason was we just made a list of names and it was the one that sounded the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> so were you one of those uh, guys that like I used to when I had the thought I could actually sing or play music, which I found out by my core director told me not to sing. Um, literally, he pulled me aside and said, don't ever sing in the concert again. <laughs> oh, God. But when I found That's that harsh. out or whatever, but I used to be one of those kids that would try different names. You know, you, you slap together like white uh, lightning, black thunder, <laughs> uh, and you try to come up with like different cool rock sounding names. Like I always felt like you could do that. Just like the old... Uh, was the game take your dog's name and your uh so you can get your porn star <laughs> name and all those different little games you play i felt like in high school that's what you did you tried to oh, yeah. so, i thought you were doing major league two with black hammer and white lightning oh that's what it is <laughs> i was <laughs> it's like a flex mentalo like all the character names in that book <laughs> was it back in the i mean i'm a i'm a 90s child was it green jello that was always gave me the that band that had the three little piggy oh, song yeah, yeah. uh ever since that band i'm always like Guys, just like literally, just take a dartboard and just throw darts to come up with band names because all the a grunge bands felt like that's what they did. Um, but so oh, you, yeah. so you, Jack the Radio. You, so how long you guys been Jack the Radio? Has that always been your band's name? Uh, yeah. So we, this band, has been around since two thousand five. But we took a lot of hiatuses. Um, it, it was myself and one other uh, guy, AC Hill, uh, that we met in college. We would write together, play together. Uh, and then we took a five year hiatus, did some other projects, came back in 2010 with a with a band. We actually got a drummer and bassist, uh, put out our first record in 2011 and then uh, put a couple records out up to about 2015. And then life things happen. People had kids, new jobs, uh, all, all that good stuff. And some other projects came up, music projects. Um, and in the past year and a half, two years, kind of re reformed the band with a new rhythm section. Uh, Kevin Rader on drums, uh, Dan Grinder on bass, and Danny Johnson, who's been there for the past 10 years. Um, so it's this is the first album in five years and thought, why not make a comic book to go along with this? That, that always makes sense. I mean, I always <laughs> think, hey, I, I'm time to re I'm going to make a comic book to go with it. Cause yeah. <laughs> So are the other guys in the band like comic book guys or is that just something that you brought in? So they uh I Danny and Dan definitely grew up reading comics. Uh Dan our bassist is a huge Iron Man guy. Um is and like, Dan's not great Iron Man era like <laughs> Iron Man 380 to like 4 or something. He got he got a couple good books in there. War Machine. <laughs> he got some War Machine. <laughs> yeah. He got War Machine. And uh, it was a Hulkbuster armor. <laughs> and then uh, Danny, who's kind of our utility guy, uh, plays a little bit of everything, was a huge um, Green Arrow guy. Okay. Um, he's he's of Swedish descent, so I think he really bonded with the, the suit and the goatee <laughs> and the arrows and stuff. Uh, and he's a cool character. And he also <laughs> loves Booster Gold, which we always joke is like the uh, goofy Iron Man, like the not is Bob. Um, <laughs> I know of like one comic book store in town for Mike and I that like the, the owner is like a diehard Booster Gold fan. And so like <laughs> you'll go into the store and Booster there's, Gold in the boxes. <laughs> yeah. He has all these graded copies because he's trying to make like the hot, a 9.8 collection. So he has his nine fours and nine twos and nine sixes for sale. <laughs> and he can't sell them because no one cares about Booster Gold. Oh man. <laughs> no. That sounds they've been like in there for thing. years, years. They've been sitting there. Oh, it's so bad. So even his own employees make fun of him for it. <laughs> Just send them to my comic shop so they're out of out of sight, out of mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> agreed, agreed. So so we right here we have pulled up the picture of the album and the picture of the the comic anthology. So what? Who did the cover art for your album? Uh, so I, I did the art for the album. So I do uh, graphic design and illustration work, um, not comics specifically, which is why I leaned on several ta people more talented than me. Um, but I, I do design work and I do a lot more with like music festivals and bands and things like that. Um, so I, I, I have the ability to do the layouts and kind of uh, 
coordinate these things. So I did the album artwork and did the design for the comic. But this, the comic cover is all Matt Allison. And then I, I added all the text and noise to it, which luckily he was cool with. <laughs> yeah. That's that's one thing when we talk to artists, like figuring out like when they have to talk about, okay, I'm designed this great cover yeah. and then they're going to drop the trade dress on it somewhere. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. It's all, all in the layout. Or a big barcode in the wrong place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Inevitably. Or the one... Or the one thing they choose to crop out is the signature or yeah. all that kind of stuff. Well, so a little little fact, Matt does not sign his artwork. And if you don't know Matt Allison, he he just put out a great book with Ad House called Kankor. Um, and he's done a couple of variant covers uh, with Image, like Bully Wars and some other things. Okay, I have seen his Bully Wars, I think. Bully Wars. Um, and he did a headlopper cover that was great. Like always hyper detailed, mm -hmm. kind of Charles Burns. Um, Klaus esque, but he's his own thing too. But he never signs. And I've talked to a couple of people about it, and they're like, well, his artwork, if you know his artwork, you know it's Matt. So why does he need to sign? <laughs> <laughs> Which is a fair point. But, but I would say the same thing about Neil Adams. But then there's another guy. Who's the other guy we always confuse uh, in the 70s? There's like two guys, and you're like, crap, is that Neil Adams or is not? And then the stupid barcode covered oh, up where the signature Cardi. Yeah, Nick Cardi. The, oh, wow. Like Cardi yeah. through a little little yeah. period like it was very similar, and you're going, oh damn it, I can't tell. And that stupid barcode is right where Neil Adams would have signed the book. <laughs> uh, so, yep. Uh, but yeah, because you end up having copycats. Yeah, they're, yeah, that. they're very similar. But so did you? So does that mean these little images that you have on your site where you can see each artist and see? Is that you graphic designing taking images from the book? It is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So because yeah, I did like took the cover art and kind of created this border. And this is something I totally stole the idea from comic conventions. Mm -hmm. So every time a convention announces a new artist, they kind of do this border and the info at the bottom. And I was like, this is freaking brilliant. Uh, I have so many artists in this book. Like I need a way to kind of announce everybody and make sure everyone's being featured. And uh, you know, you, you want to know if Koi's in here, you know, and you want to know if Matt's in here and, um, so created these things and they seem to work well. Yeah. So we have one more. We have another image from this. Is this you? Yeah. So that's an illustration I did. So was this for, uh, was this the entire page or is like the part of the story or is this just a uh, pinup? Yeah. So I did a, I just did a pinup, which I was, you know, somewhat hesitant to do, but I had started drawing it. Um, and so we're, this is perfect. It's an homage to oh, a uh, Johnny Cash cover. Very nice. Uh, I think it's just a oh, cash yeah. maybe. Uh, That's cool. But yeah, so I, I ended up doing that. I mean, I did a, I kind of wore every hat you can wear in a comic. I lettered some some of the uh, stories. Uh, did Ooh, the how did you, so did you actually like handwrite the letters or did you just yeah. find right font? <laughs> no, I'm not that brave. So I, I, I digitally lettered, which is okay. how most people do it these days. Yeah. But I think I caught I did, a couple of the artists did hand letter their stories, which is That's so great. cool to yeah. see. I think I saw some image of a uh, Mayhew where he was drawing the trade dress. And then he, then he goes, Oh no, they're, they're going to get rid of this. I'm just doing it for fun. Like he's putting the trade <laughs> dress on one of his images. I'm like, Oh, I thought they drew, I thought they digitally inserted it or everything. He's like, yo, they do. There's just no today. You don't get a chance to, but like back in the day you hand lettered stuff and you oh, did yeah. the titles and everything. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It used to be a job. I think, I think a lot of people probably just want to try to get them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it used to be a job. Yeah, it did. Drawing the little corner box pictures, too. It it still is. I mean, there's a great uh, letter down the road. Uh, oh, my God, his name just escaped. I've hung out with him a few times. Um, but he, he's the letter for, like, Paper Girls, Southern mm. Bastards. Mm. He's an he's an award-winning letter. Uh <laughs> I never. Well, I guess I the gig, so maybe that's that's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true, dude. Not an easy gig because I can't I can't print for shit. <laughs> I got a doctor's handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> you got me curious. I want to yeah. see Jared Fletcher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah see, he, the, the, <laughs> he doesn't even get listed. Jared like when Fletcher. you pull up like my comic shop, they're not even listed. Like you don't see letter yeah. or listed. I well, feel bad for him. That's a. a 
ridiculous. Uh, it's another whole nother conversation. Same thing with colorists. You know, most of them don't get their name on the front of their book. Yeah. Uh, I've talked to Rico yeah. about that several times. Uh, and Rico's worked on some amazing books. He's done some stuff with Sanford too. And um, he usually does not have his name on the front of the book and letter. Maybe I can see the argument. Uh, colorists. Uh, yeah. It's kind of tough. It adds a lot. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Col colorists adds a lot of, Damn, the right color. The right color can really, can really make a piece of art. That's can definitely a not great. Pencil or inker look look better. Well, yeah. that's what, and I, I do give uh, Coy the one that's who really cool. brought that to our attention. He when he was talking about his uh, the Daredevil uh, Immortal variant, he he mm -hmm. gave credit to his. He's like, yeah, I penciled this in, but my colorer, they he's the one who blended the colors and make it look like it's morphing yeah. into. Yeah, it's covered like I didn't realize. Yeah. Oh man, that was yeah. Awful. So I well, think that's I got one more from this. Yeah, to do Tommy uh, Tommy Lee Edwards. So, so have you gotten the commissions from Tommy Lee as well, or is this just you reached out to him just to see? Yeah. No. Uh, so I met Tommy at I think the 2009 Heroes Con. Um, and got a Wolverine commission. And I mean, Tommy, there's so many artists that are going all digital now. Mm -hmm. Tommy's like painting on the floor, uh, mixed media. He's got everything, pencils, colored pencils, uh, paint, um, watercolors. Um, well, and then ironically, so this piece is actually digital, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I built it up so much, but um, yeah, met him in 2009 and he's another guy I found out lives in North Carolina. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. So I started uh, seeing him at all the local shows and, um, you know, became buddies over the years. We like a lot of the same things. He's into cars, music, comics, beer, um, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I reached out to Tommy, man. And I, I was, yeah. I wasn't sure if, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was going to have time because he's always working on like four or five projects at the same time. Um, and he's got a great book coming out uh, with, how is it? Aftershock? Uh, it's something Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Is that the, oh, shoot. I've looked at right, it because I follow right, him on Instagram. His Instagram handle is great too. It's like the storyteller or something like yeah. that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Grendel, Kentucky is the name of the book that looks badass as well. Nice. But yeah, reached out to Tommy, man. And this, he did a one pager. Um, so it was kind of fun. Um, so I, I, this, this was kind of my first foray in writing scripts for comics. So we basically adapted um, the lyrics from the songs into panel uh, panels for a short comic. Um, and so, as you can imagine, I didn't always know who was going to do each story. So I was kind of trying to cater and edit uh, to whoever the artist was. And then in this case, Tommy was only able to do one page. So we, we cut it down, figured out the song that fit to do a one page story for. Okay. Um, he, I mean, he blew it out of the water. I think he posted this, this image, this panel image unfinished a couple months ago. And I, it's like the most retweets, most likes, <laughs> Uh, of any uh, piece from the book, um, yeah. and rightfully so. I mean, look at it. Awesome. <laughs> I want that outfit. Yeah, it's awesome. Do you guys know anyone in Nashville? That <laughs> <laughs> Not personally, but I do know. I'm a few sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, I'm sure we can at least get you the hat. There we go. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was it Earl's? Is that what's down on Broadway that sells hats and boots? Yep. There they go. That's there the hat go. place. Yeah. Yeah. Two for one. <laughs> My buddy bought a hat down in Nashville. Yeah, man. it's three. It's three for one. It's three for one now. Oh, times are hard, man. Three for one. <laughs> I know, right? Buy a pair, get two free. That's crazy. Wow. It's not. It doesn't point to them jacking the prices up or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the so, last thing I put in here. Oh yeah, let's see. Was an odd thing. I found this story that you, you had <laughs> mentioned where you were actually George. You were put into a comic book. Yes, that you you were you cameoed in an issue of Gambit. I think it was Gambit two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, Cl and Clay Man <laughs> had put you in here. 
And it, it, I know it might be hard for you all to see it, but yeah, they, he's, there's your name badge right there. Yeah. Got the Hosmer name badge. Bag. It is. Which was <laughs> good because I showed this to my mom. I was like, holy. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, it kind of looks like you. I'm like, look at the name tag. <laughs> <laughs> It's me. Yeah. How did that come about? Oh man, this was uh, I guess right place, right time. Um, I had ordered a commission back in 2009 from Clayman. Um, I think he had done like a couple X Men books at that point. Um, I'm trying to think what else he may have been working on. It was pretty early. He had done a few books, but he wasn't like doing the Catwoman and Batman stuff that he's been doing recently. Um, and I ordered the commission and like a couple months later, hit him back up. Nothing. Six months later, nothing. And basically like a year over a year had gone by and he had felt really bad about it. Hmm. And he's like, I want to make it up to you. Um, and I was like, well, it's always been a dream to be in a comic. If you ever saw <laughs> somebody in the background, that'd be cool. Thinking totally, he's going to be like, nah, man, like, why are you even bringing this up? But he was so <laughs> cool. Um, he's like, I'm actually drawing a book right now. I can't tell you what it is. Uh, I think I've got the perfect spot. Um, so this was, I don't know if you guys read uh, this, this series or this volume, but basically Remy is chasing a female character through a museum and she's stealing something and he's chasing her. And basically the guards come down on him and she gets away. So he drew me in as one of the guards at this uh, Washington DC museum. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I see it cool. all the time with Kickstarters where That's pretty awesome. hey, if you volu- if you pay X amount of dollars, we'll draw you into the comic. Um, but to, to know that you got it just because it took man a little bit longer to do it than he was <laughs> intending. <laughs> See, Mike, that's what you, instead of getting like the bigger drawing, you just need to say, hey, man, can you throw me into the. Give me a book. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I thought he I did it. But, oh, man. He did it for some other guys. And I don't know if one of them was his rep at the time. Um, but he did another issue that had like three or four people in a scene that were obviously people. Um, yeah. It was pretty cool. I, I, I always love when Kickstarters do that, man. I think it's such a cool idea. It's such a good way to kind of raise more money and get someone excited about your book. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're if I was if I have the money, I'm gonna promote the hell out of that book if I'm gonna be in it. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, dude, man, I'm so and so's drawing yeah, me in this absolutely. book. You got to check it out. Well, you guys are the ones they want. You yeah. know, you're, you're gonna mention it. You're gonna do the article. You know, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have all the follow ups possible. Yeah. Uh, get, get my get my 300 Twitter followers and. <laughs> but <laughs> I know too many. I know too many cover artists. Nobody does interiors that I that I talk to. So I never get myself in a book. <clears throat> oh, man. Well, shoot, I mean, name name the people that actually open books these days. It seems like it's like oh, you buy it for the cover and what is it? Actually, the we That's saw an article point. today, Mike, that is like the DC might be going towards yeah. more and more towards digital, and you're just oh, like, man. I don't. Yeah. You just want them to go. Hold on a second. No. We're we're comic book writers, but I mean, George, you're a fan. Like, are you going to be buying the digital, or do you like it enough to where does it? You like having the floppy in your hand? I've I've only done like one series digitally, and it was because they put it out digitally and then release the hardcover later. So if it was something like that, where I could read weekly or monthly and then buy the hardcover two months, three months, whatever, yeah. six months down the line, I might do it. But other than that, I want to hold the book. I want to flip through it. Absolutely. I mean, I want to look at it later. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Get a smell. smell it, smell the ink and the paper and the, the exactly. tactile feeling of it. And it's just... Yeah, it's really important. I agree. You, you don't find many art collectors who just have pictures of like the Mona Lisa on their tablet. <laughs> look at all these pictures. Look, look at these pictures. I just <laughs> yep. Well, that's what uh, I think Marvel, right. when the COVID it's, happened, it's, or when COVID happened, like they had a few they released digitally. And then they said, you know what? Um, they In the past month, they've actually released them now because they said oh, wow. we're not making the same amount of money, but also – Hey, people want to buy Ghost Spider for the cover as much as they care about the interior. Like, I want to read the story, but the covers matter, especially Ghost yeah. Ghost Spider had 
some gorgeous covers, and then all of a sudden they stopped. Um, it was yeah. like, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, I think Mayhew, the reason I knew that was because Mayhew had an exclusive he did that got put on hiatus because, hey, we're not releasing the book, so this store exclusive doesn't come out. <laughs> uh, oh, man. So, well, and, and for anybody that goes to conventions, you want to get stuff signed, too. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do with your, your digital? Yeah. <laughs> going to print things out, maybe? Yeah. So sell prints. Yeah. yeah. Sell. One last thing. This, uh, this, yeah. this image, we love this image by Koi. You're, you did a music video that tied in the comic. What, yes. How did, how did you, did, was that all you taking the comic or did you have someone, how'd that happen? So yeah, I got to give a shout out to uh, one away blue world. Who's the publisher for the book. Um, Tyler and Wendy there have been awesome. And uh, I feel like we're going to mention Heroes Con. We could do a drinking game with Heroes Con. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but met them at Heroes Con last year. So, Mike, I may have seen you there uh, walking around. We may have maybe shoulders or something. But, um, uh, yeah, they've been great. And so uh, – He was in Reed uh, Frisson at the time, I think. <laughs> oh, I uh, yeah, hang yeah. out with her a little bit uh, last year. And uh, her husband – Don't say that to me. I got to go. Uh, I can't remember her husband, <laughs> him or Steve Seely. Uh, Seely, yep. They're brothers. I can't remember which one. Mm, no, brother, Dave. brother, yep. Yeah, Dave. 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 Okay. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, it's Seely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's amazingly talented as well. Steve. Super nice. Um, but yeah, met them. She's so nice. Yeah. Uh, Justin Zimmerman also works with the Wave Blue World, but Justin uh, has been doing film and video for decades. And one of the coolest thing a Wave Blue World does that I'm seeing Image start to do too is they'll do comic book trailers. So they'll mm -hmm. do animated trailers, animating stills from the books. Um, and so we we work together to do kind of like a 60 second, I think, or 90 second trailer for the book, and that was right around when COVID was hitting and shelter in place was hitting. So we had plans to shoot some music videos, but couldn't do any of that. Uh, so seeing that trailer, it just seemed like serendipitous that why don't we just do an animated video? We've got this 56 page collection of badass comic art. Mm. Um, we've got the people with the ability to do awesome animation work. Um, so it just kind of all fell together. Nice. Uh, very quick, actually, over a couple weeks. That's really cool. Like, I've always been curious, like, because I, I know Marvel tried it. Maybe DC did, too. They tried to do those animated comic books, like Black Panther was done and Spider-Woman. And, yeah. like, they're hard to read and watch at the same time when it, like, moved across the screen. Yeah. But as a music, I always, I've always loved music videos, especially ones that tell stories. And, like, I know watching yours, like, I, I found you guys through Koi's Facebook post when awesome. he was bragging about this photo and then showed the video. So I watched the video and then started fall and started listening just in like, okay, I when, when I'm in the mood for the, the sort of your music sort of is Americana, but not, it's like not, I hate just labeling it as Americana. It's like that in between, cause you said cash, you said it's like that weird, what, how would you classify yourself? Like I hate be, being a genre. Oh, pod, but. Well, an Americana's turned into like alternative. It's like yeah. the catch all. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I hate saying. They're like, okay, it's not Bob Dylan, yeah. but it's. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some Americana, we call it roots rock, but it's a yeah. mix of rock and roll, blues, country folk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Little rock bit and roll so tricky. Cause it's like, okay, am I going heavy metal and ACDC when I say rock and roll or my <laughs> Tom Petty? <laughs> I mean, Think I would like Betty Stones. Yeah. Um, and maybe I'm being hopeful here, but those no. those are <laughs> who I would like to, to associate with. <laughs> no, I, no, like, guys, if, you, if I've listened to your album, The Creatures, awesome. I, I haven't listened to your other stuff, but I do have to say, your band's name is really hard for Alexa to remember. When I say Jack the Radio, it pumps. It starts. Here's pump up music from Rock Rock ninety seven. I'm like, no, Jack the Radio. Here's more uh, pump up man. music. I'm like, damn it, that doesn't work. I have to actually go into Alexa <laughs> and look up your album and listen to it. I'm like, ah, oh, that doesn't work. We didn't think about ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Will the road? Yeah, really. I swear, I've tried saying Jack the Radio like twelve times, and Alexa. I mean, I could do it right now, and Alexa will start playing pump up music. I'm like, that's not what I want. Yeah. Who <laughs> ten years ago would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the air and eventually music play because I just say it out loud in my living room. 
That's <laughs> I would have guessed that. <laughs> well, I was, I was telling my daughter to, I have an echo downstairs, and I was telling my daughter to put let go of something. And then I told her thank you when she did. And all of a sudden, Echo goes, you're welcome. I hope you have a good day, too. Because they interpreted let go as echo. Thank <laughs> oh you. Oh, my God. And I was like, okay, I'm freaking scared right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> it does scare me a little bit. I love the fact that I can listen to music and just say, hey, Alexa, play Pearl Jam. And here she comes. She's about to start playing Pearl Jam. <laughs> Alexa off. <laughs> I, I, do, I do enjoy that feature. Don't talk too loud. You're going to get my uh, mic going here. Over. <laughs> oh, man. I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, I used to not think so, but it's I, – I love music, and I, I, I like having CDs. I mean, I have thousands yeah. of CDs. Um, but then my wife goes, okay, you can only collect one thing. And I collect comic books. Oh, I guess my – move the camera. I collect comic books. You can't have – the C, I have the CD wallet full of CDs as well. But nice. um, it's – it's one of those she goes, oh, you get one one hobby that you can collect. So I've chosen comics. I'm um, sorry. But I do like having Echo Alexa so I can pull up the music and Spotify and all those different yeah. ones. And then then buy the albums. Like in the indie artists, I typically try to buy your stuff strictly because, hey, you get half a penny for every song that's played or if that, if you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah, so. Spotify is tricky. And recently found out they actually prorate the rates based on the highest streamed artists. So you're getting paid based on the person that has the most streams. Uh, so it's, it's even smaller than I thought it was. <laughs> um, That's an interesting, yeah, we're just going to. And then the and then base you off of them. Uh, basically telling artists that it's a new day. You need to put out multiple records a year. If you want to get, make the same money you used to, which, well, the, the bad thing is for you guys, it was you made your money on concerts and merch. Oh, you're yeah. not being able to do that right now. Yep. Yeah. Like, when do you do you even have an idea when your next concert is going to be? Oh, man. We've we've had shows canceled since April, uh, as far out as October. Hey, uh, I mean, why aren't you playing Sturgis? I heard the motorcycle rally up in <laughs> South Dakota actually still went on. We could open for uh, you've had some great concerts in Nashville, man. We could open for was it Smash Mouth recently? Um, yeah. <laughs> I think Chris yeah. Jericho got in trouble because his band Fozzy they they did something in North Dakota recently. Oh man! Even Vanilla Ice canceled though on the Fourth of July. He was supposed <laughs> to do something in Texas, and it, he at least had the foresight to say, "Oh yeah, this probably isn't a good idea." <laughs> <laughs> well even even publishing even publishing isn't the same as it was before you know like i remember uh maybe it was two years ago or something like that i remember being really psyched i got like sixteen thousand placements over whatever i don't know a lot of them were like in other countries and weird stuff and i'm like oh man i'm gonna get paid this time <laughs> i can remember that the check was like eighty dollars I'm like eighty dollars. What are you talking about? Eighty dollars, sixteen thousand placements. I got eighty dollars. I wanted to kill someone. So, if you, in case you guys <laughs> so don't yeah, know, Mike the, Mike was a musician in a former career. So, uh, so we'll throw the albums up yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can see them. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, man! You brought it up. Stop with you that. You brought thing. it up. I mean, you're um, the title though, Leisure. <laughs> you're yeah. you're <laughs> leisuring right there. I like it. Don't worry. I'll work. I'll work. Please take it off the screen. And don't worry. Please take it off. Please take it off. He has his friendship bracelets on and everything. Oh. Bad, man. It's bad. Well, so Mike, I'll, change the subject. I'll, I'll continue on the other subject. I am nervous about the publishing side uh, as far as getting placements on like film and television because I, I'm. I wonder how much is yeah. actually being filmed That's in the true. past few months. That if there's going to be less less programming, I I'm, think that's safe to assume. Yeah. Uh, so there's going to be less publishing money or sync money uh, for all the artists that have music on those programs and things like but that. It, but it's sort of weird though. At the same time, you have HBO Max. You have uh, you have all these other new pop ups. The Peacock for NBC. Every freaking network oh, yeah. is yeah. trying to release the original material. So once I feel like they're starting to get, I think I heard the new mission impossible movie is actually beginning to film. Like they're, they're figuring out ways around it. 
Um, and what you might end up with is more of this reality TV where they drop in this, the music in the background. And oh, like, yeah. and so there, I know there's ways yeah. in, it's just a matter of having the right publishing company that puts your name out there. <laughs> so yeah. hopefully comic book yeah. invest can get your name out there and then you can be, uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, no. And we, we, work, uh, we work through, uh, reverb nation and APM out in California. Um, so that's, I mean, that's a part of our income is, yeah is that sync placement. Uh, yeah. And I'm also trying yeah. to look on the bright side that maybe it's more reality type shows that maybe the huge bands don't want their music on it. Mm -hmm. So the, the more indie artists, maybe more opportunities. I don't know. Well, I mean, and I guess yeah, well, and I think that's, I think that's true too. Cause APM and reverb nations, what mine is through too. And it's a right. lot of like food network stuff and oh yeah, spike yeah. TV and stuff. I don't care. I don't care yeah. what it is. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Put me on there. I have no pride. <laughs> I, I, had, I had friends so. that uh, they, they had a band that didn't last very long at all, but they, they had their one shiny moment was they were on a show on Hallmark called The Shunning. It was like some Amish family. Uh, not it, You think it'd be a horror movie. But no, it was like the woman wanted to marry the guy who wasn't Amish. So it was called The Shunning <laughs> on the Hallmark channel. But they got a song on TV and they were so excited. And I was just like, but who's going to sit through the movie to figure out when your song <laughs> plays on the shunning? <laughs> dude, it, dude, I'll tell you what, man. It's exciting no matter what it's on. I can remember watching oh, this, yeah. an episode of Jada De Laurentiis at, <laughs> at home, a Jada at home or whatever. And I'm, I'm just messing around in the kitchen and all of a sudden I hear, nice. like, wait a minute, I recognize that. Is that my song? And I freaked <laughs> out, man. It's cool to see it. It's, cool. it's, it's really cool to hear that the first time. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. a nobody. Nobody knows who I am. So when I hear my song, on something national you're i mean people know who you are no one knows who i am so <laughs> it's badass man it's cool it's fun it's, it's a pretty well, awesome day when your stuff's on, on TV. so have you had anything from what have you had on like a tv show like oh yeah i caught that episode of ncis or yeah the the big ones uh i'm most recently you know you're talking about the the hard-hitting hallmark channel with the shunning uh <laughs> the most recent big one we had was a. Uh, <laughs> Real, uh, the relaunch Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. uh, it was on CW. Uh, uh, I think it was like yeah. BH 90210. Yeah. It's yeah. It, the weirdest premises because I, I never watched it, but of course I'm like, oh, I got to look this up. Um, it's them all as the actors. I, I don't know. I didn't fully oh, wait, get it. Is this like the reality TV show where they're talking about? It's a scripted show. Oh, okay. But they're all actors in it. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had one in there, which I mean, it's super cool because it's like Mike was saying, everybody, you know, it's it's out there, it's national, it's international, um, and people know Beverly Hills 90210. So when you say it, uh, yeah. it's it's a cool thing. Well, and I can think of uh, Bon Iver as an example for me. Oh, I heard yeah. Skinny Love on the an episode of Chuck. And oh, nice. that's, that's how I looked up and found out who Bon Iver was, is because I watched an episode of Chuck and I was like, dude, this song's awesome. And that's I great, looked man. it up like it works for in like all of a sudden. Now, granted, he had other stuff, but that, that song led me to him was through that episode. And yeah, like, yeah, so and I, he, I, he, he's another ahead. guy. He's a North Carolina connection. Um, I say Bon Iver. I don't know. Oh, which yeah. one's I, I probably I butcher your names regularly. So yeah. <laughs> But he 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 lived in I've heard Bonnie Vera as well. Yeah, a couple guy couple guys from I've heard Bon Iver in my own head multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he came down here, man. That guy's he's killing it. And his music music is everywhere. I hear it in a lot of places, which is awesome. I don't know, he's just on a Taylor Swift album. So Oh, that's right. I still haven't listened to that. I just I've cracked up it, and I was I like, really? <laughs> Uh, well, George, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, we're going to have the article out on Friday. It's going to be great. Awesome. Um, I love this interview. We're going to drop your video in. So if you read awesome. the article, guys, you can go and see the, the creatures video will be in there because I've loved it. I've had it. I had it when in Koi's article. I think it's just a great video. I love the song. It's a great yeah. song. Um, thank you for having comics with us. I, I think it's so cool to talk to someone who you got connected to artists, not because you're writing about them, but because you're just a fan. You started buying commissions and, and doing that. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, it's so cool, the comic game and how, how all we're all interconnected. Um, once again, we're comicbookinvest.com. Uh, this is 3Comic Money. And check out Jack the Radio. 
check out the new album Creatures. If you uh, if you want to buy the book, you can go, definitely go to jacktheradio.com and buy the book. You can also uh, it's through Blue Wave, but definitely go to their website and buy it through their website. Um, you can buy little packets. I've seen you post Instagram photos of all the books going out and all the albums going out. And yeah. You got stickers and you got all this other stuff that you design. So if you like George's art, he has little stickers and things as well mm. that you can get in posters. So thank you for being with us. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's been awesome. Yes. You guys are great. Thanks so much. Love the program. Yeah. So, all right. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for your time, man.